So hi everyone. Uh, it's great to have so many of you here with us today. Um, I hope you're all feeling well and refreshed as we enter the new year. My name's Claudia. I'm the Membership Engagement Manager here at RCOT and I'm joined on the call by Emma Grover, who's our Professional Development Lead, and Andrew Omarod, who's the founder of CPD Me, who we've partnered with to bring you this brand new member benefit, your very own digital CPD portfolio. So as I've said, there's a lot to be on the call today and we've got a jam-packed session. So I'm going to quickly start with a couple of different housekeeping bits. So firstly, this session is for you. So please do use this as a chance to interact. You can introduce yourselves in the chat. I know a few people have been saying uh, that they can hear, so thank you so much. Um, and yeah, add questions in the chat as we go as well. We'll do our best to get around as many of you as possible. As I said, we've got some RCOT reps in the chat. So where possible, if you could make sure that your message is shown as available to everyone. Um, in the chat functionality in the chat functionality and we should be able to answer um, some questions in the chat as we go to can just make sure that we are recording yep yeah. brilliant and uh, yeah so the session will be recorded as I've just said um, and we'll send the recording and the slides around to all of you in the next couple of days as well so I want to quickly apologize in advance. Um, as I've said, we want to get as many of you on the call today. Uh, so there might be a slight lag um, with the slides, but we're hoping that there's not. Um, but if there is, please do just bear with us um, if there is a slight delay. So I'm just going to run you through what we expect from today's session. So Emma will be talking us through how we came to be where we are today and the pilot we ran with members to make sure that we're delivering the right service for you. You'll then get the chance to see the portfolio in action with Andrew, uh, who's the founder of CPD Me, who we've got with us on the call today. Very exciting. Um, and we'll then hear some real life examples of how this tool has been having a positive impact for members already um, and ideas for how to make the most of the platform for yourselves. We'll then go through a quick recap of your wider RCOT membership benefits and we'll end by going through questions from yourself. So as I said, please do pop those in the chat as we go. So before I get started, I just want to give you a brief overview of the portfolio itself. If we could have the next slide, please, Pat. So for those who might not know uh, what we're talking about and might not have a chance to log in, yes, um, your CPD portfolio is a brand new member benefit. And simply put, it's a single place to capture lifelong learning and development, no matter your role or your career stage. You can access the portfolio online and on the go via the app. And as you'll see later on in the demo, your activities are mapped against the HCPC CPD standards, um, taking any anxiety or stress out of the audit process should you be selected in the future. What's better still, this is brought to you as a member benefit and is therefore included in the cost of your RCOT membership. I'm now going to hand you over to the wonderful Emma, who's going to give you some insights into the work that we've done behind the scenes to get to where we are today. So Emma, take it away. I'll put myself on mute. Hello everyone, I hope you can hear me loud and clear too. It's really lovely to have so many of you with us this evening. Um, my name's Emma, as Claudia said, I'm an occupational therapist and the professional development lead here at RCOT. So like many of you on the call, I'm subject to meeting the same CPD standards that um, are set out by HCPC. And I've got to say I'm feeling really genuinely excited by how this portfolio can really support us all. And this is a great opportunity for us to look at it in more detail and explore it together. So being both web and app based, it really is um, helping us to fit CPD into busy working lives. Claudia just mentioned this, but you can access it via your RCOT member portal. Now, this is where you log in on the RCOT website and where you go to manage your member account. So that's one way you can access it. And the other way is via the CPD Me app. And I personally like to describe this platform as CPD recording that you can sort of like pick up and put down whilst being really safe in the knowledge that it's there for you to pick up again whenever suits and also when you're on the go, which is great. So as you know, we've teamed up with CPD Me to provide this and you'll hear from Andrew a bit later about his own background and the development of the product. But something I just want to stress a bit more at this point is that this is a tool for all of us. So um, whether or not we are professionally required to meet HCPC CPD standards, whether or not we're ever selected for audit, um, no matter our role, our career level, it's a place uh, for all of us to capture our lifelong learning and development journey. And it can really help um, us to look at our learning and growth over time. So it supports it and it helps us to track it. Next slide, please. OK, so to give you some insight into how we've got to where we are right now and how we've been able to reach this point, I'm just going to talk us through the project timeline. 
Through um, sort of general feedback we had from members, frequently asked questions coming into the professional development team, and also lots of the various CPD talks and workshops we've done with members. Um, we were really clear that providing members with a way to record CPD was a gap and was something we weren't doing. And we were also really aware that our new HGPC CPD recording cycle would begin on the 1st of November 2023. So we were really keen to find and launch the right product and launch it as close as possible to that November date. From February through to September last year, we worked with an external company to support the project. And in February, we used those member insights I spoke to you about earlier, um, along with what's expected of us as registered um, occupational therapists to outline a criteria that a product that we looked at would need to meet. Between March and May, six uh, kind of off the shelf CPD recording products were considered and reviewed against the criteria that we set. Three of these were kind of immediately excluded because they were for a different target audience or they didn't provide the, pr provide the core functions and features that we needed. But then the final three remaining products were robustly event evaluated against our requirements and that's what identified CPD me um, as a front runner. In June last year, our community volunteers were invited to take part in a pilot of which 77 members signed up and were given access. And then between July and September, we sent out user surveys to get feedback um, and the, date, the first sort of batch of data was analysed. It was really good because the early insights from the very first survey we did were so positive that what we thought is, OK, let's um, actually start planning to implement this now. We would obviously have to await the next set of data to check that nothing else was coming up um, to indicate that we shouldn't go ahead. But we were really aware of that kind of November date and we wanted to launch this as soon as possible as, or as close as possible to that so that it would enable all of us to start embedding those really positive CPD habits as close as as close to that date as possible and then continue in that two year cycle as we mean to go on. I'll share some of the pilot findings on the next slide with you all. Um, but final analysis of all the data happens by early October. So that meant the contracts could be reviewed and agreed. And we spent October and November working hard to complete the tasks that were required for launch. And um, we um, spoke about it at the OT show. I don't know if any of you on the call were there, but hello again, if you were. Um, and we were able to launch this on Monday, the 4th of December, which was really exciting. Next slide, slide please. Thank you. Uh, so on the screen are some of the kind of headline um, statistics from the data and insights that we gathered during the pilot. And you can see it's really positive with 100% of those that took part indicating that they wanted to um, use the tool again, which was amazing. And just as some context, the external company who worked with us on this, um, they sort of said, you know, when we get the results back, a generalised benchmark across the board would be that we're looking for results that are around 75% to indicate um like a really positive result from the pilot. So really reassuring that in all of these areas, um, it exceeded this, which was fantastic. Next slide, please. Okay, so I'm now going to hand you over to Andrew. Um, Andrew is gonna share a bit about his own background, the development of the tool, and most importantly as well, he'll show you the platform in action. Uh, Andrew, over to you. Emma, thank you so much. <clears throat> well, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me because um, I always like to share my story with lots of healthcare professionals out there. So let me tell you a little bit about me and how CPD me became. So I am going to confess that I am actually a paramedic, but I am regulated and supported by the HCPC, just like the majority of you people on the call tonight. So um, I was equally very fortunate to be one of the very first paramedics in the UK to be born and bred from a university setting. So I did a degree and then almost immediately after went on to do a master's degree back in 2009. And if anybody here has done a master's degree, um, you'll know the challenges around finding that research program uh, project at the back of your degree. And um, one of the things I identified was what I was very good at was attending lots of courses. I'd go to conferences. I'd be supported by my governing body, very similar to yourselves as valid members. But what I wasn't very good at was keeping a record of my learning and development. I had what I could best describe as a shoebox of CPD. And everything I did, whether that was a course, 
reading a journal, reading a book, because I do like reading books. Um, everything I did, I would literally just put into a shoebox of CPD in hope that if I did get called for audits, I could pull something together and produce a portfolio. So when I did some initial research, what I recognized was this wasn't just unique to paramedics. This was occupational therapists, this was physiotherapists, this was speech and language therapists, this was nurses, and this was doctors. It, it covered the full spectrum of people working in health and social care. It wasn't unique that it was just me who had a shoebox of CPD. And in very short of sharing my 60,000 word thesis with you, the first thing that was highlighted and identified from my research group was whatever we do has to reduce the amount of time it takes to record and think about CPD. And not just think about CPD, but ultimately document it effectively with a reflection and any supporting evidence that would meet the mandated requirements or standard one, of course, for those people who know of the HCPC, which is we must maintain an accurate and continuous record of CPD. And I recognised myself at that time that keeping a shoebox of CPD is not maintaining an accurate and continuous record. So we looked at all the barriers. First one, of course, was time, and that equally was highlighted also on the, um, the research that Emma and the uh, fant fabulous team at RCLT um, brought. The second one was formatting, which was, I just don't know what format it needs to be in. So I'm going to go and clean the spare bedroom, or I'm going to go and paint the fence at the very bottom of the garden that I don't even visit anymore. It's almost the same psychology as when you have an essay looming or you have to sit down and physically do a piece of work and you try everything in the world to avoid it. That not knowing what format my portfolio needs to be in was enough of a psychological barrier for you to say, I'm just not going to start it in the first place. And the third one was, I just have so much evidence, I don't know what to do with it. And I don't really want to spend time and effort to do all of them things when I could just keep it somewhere in a digital shoe box and I'll just do something with it later. So there was lots of findings, but the key one was time. And um, back in 2009, when we initially launched the system, what we recognized was um, actually time was really, really important and reducing the amount of time was even equally important. Now, ironically, I did some research with some occupational therapy students at a university in Manchester and uh, Equally, all of them, same students, identified the same thing, which was, I mean, these people weren't even in profession yet. They weren't started work just as a student and said, time is the most important factor of reducing. And actually a quote from a very um, fabulous young occupational therapist said, Andrew, it takes me two minutes to record CPD using your app. It takes less time to record CPD using your system than just to brush my teeth. If you make it any longer, I'll stop using your system. And she was absolutely right because it takes around two minutes to log your CPD, scan some evidence, upload it, and then it sits nicely in this dashboard that I'm going to show you now. So I'm going to show you the dashboard. I'm going to whiz through there and show you how simple I can record CPD. And then I'm going to try and share my mobile app with you on the screen and equally show you how I can dictate into the app and it will turn that into text. I will pre-warn you now, when I share my screen, I guarantee you my mum will ring me. So if she does and it says Susan calling, I pre-apologise now. But um, let's show you the dashboard. So here we go. Fingers crossed you'll be able to see um, this. Hopefully you can see that. Just give me a yes in the chat if you can see that. Fabulous, thank you. So, once you log into the dashboard, this is what you can see. And even though it looks, gosh, there's lots of things going on there, let me walk you through it slowly for the functionality and features. So, at any given point in time, if you want a little guided tour, you click here at the top left-hand side where it says show tour, and you literally can have a little guided tour and it will walk you through all the boxes, what they mean, what they are, and how that will support you. So at any given point, you can click on this show tour because it might be a month before you log into this system next or two weeks or three weeks. But if you ever need to walk through any of the pages, there's a show tour option at the top left hand side. Here you can see the current data is showing for the last 12 months. Now, I can change that if I want to to 24 months because we all know that that ultimately is the period for HCPC audit. So. If I just want to see what I've done for the last 24 months, I can toggle these boxes here. So I can go 12 months, 24 months, 36 months. I can show off and go lifetime, 
or I can choose custom dates. And that's really useful if you do get picked for audit, because if you choose two custom dates, what this system will do is scan all of your CPD and show you what you've got or what you are missing between that date period. So that's a really, really useful feature. But I'm just gonna, for demo purposes, look at the last 24 months. These boxes here show how many hours you've logged, how many entries you've logged. That consists of CPD diary entries, and reflective entries so that gives you a really good oversight to scan what you've got in your digital system now imagine that in a shoebox it will be virtually impossible you'll be flicking through books and letters and certificates and emails and such the next two graphs here i call them the dancing donuts because these change as you document more cpd now, when we think about standard one of the HCPC, standard one is to maintain an accurate and continuous record of your learning and development. I personally guarantee you, once you start using this system, maintaining an accurate record of your learning and development and mapping it to the HCPC will be a big green tick done for you. It will be super, super simple. So this box here shows your CPD categories because of course, standard two of the HCPC is there must be a different mixture of learning activities. Your CPD can't just be one thing. You can't just read a book or take part in online courses or attend webinars or read a journal. You have to do a, a multiple um, different selection of CPD across your two year period of time. Or in fact, we all do that. We just don't map it to different things. So what this dancing donut does is it shows you in what capacity you have done things. So podcast, updating knowledge through the internet or TV, discussions with colleagues, in-service training, webinars. So as you build your portfolio, it will actually map your CPD to them. Now, ideally, you want to see a perfectly formatted donut, just like you can see. What you don't want to see is a donut that's all orange or all green, because that would indicate that you are just doing one type of CPD. So having a good mixture or a good breakdown of colors on your donut is really good. The next box over here is activity types. Now. I don't know the age of the audience tonight, but when I did my research, we had um, 50 people in the research group who were over the age of 40 and equally had got lots of years experience in practice. And one of the things that they fed back to me was, Andrew, we like the idea you're gonna try and make recording CPD simple, but we don't want to record CPD if we're not getting paid for it. It has to be in works time. Now we know since then things have changed and it's a little bit different. And actually people record CPD in their own time, in work time, in university time, in all different time in fact. But what this graph will do is it will break down in what capacity you have taken part in that CPD. Now this is a golden nugget for you if you are applying for a job or you're going through NHS pay banding or a Jennifer change, whatever that might look like for you, this will help you highlight that actually you have proactively taken charge of recording CPD whilst in work time, but more importantly, in your own time. So it shows your dedication to self-directed study and such. So as you can see, myself in my own time versus managerial role versus professional role versus myself as part of my job role. So there's a good mixture there of in what capacity I've taken part in my learning and development. And you'll see how that maps in a second when I show you the, the CPD diary form. The next two boxes at the bottom are equally useful boxes because you can see here what you've mapped against the four standards. So standard one, of course, is maintain a continuous and up-to-date record. By virtue of you using this system, you are meeting standard one. So that's one of the standards done by simply you using this new platform provided by the RCRT. Standard two is demonstrate that your CPD is a mixture of learning activities. So again, when you revert back to this dancing donut and you see a good mixture there, you can be satisfied that you are helping support meet standard two and you are not just doing one type of CPD. Standard three and standard four are a little bit more detailed because standard three is making sure that you're seeking to ensure that CPD is contributing to the quality of the practice and service delivery. And then standard four, of course, when you hover over it, is seeking to ensure that the CPD benefits the service user. So the end user, the people who are gonna receive um, the benefit of your underpinning knowledge. This box here is absolutely amazing because one of the challenges for most practitioners, again, back to that shoebox of CPD is, is there any gaps in your learning and development? Because if there is any gaps of two to three months, you're gonna to need to think about what to put in them. So very quickly here, I can see this is a new system just been used, January, December, November, but 
as you build your portfolio on the system, you will be able to see that there is no gaps in that 12 or 24 month period. And if there is gaps, the system will intuitively remind you. So it will say to you, if you're gonna submit your portfolio for audit, hi, Andrew, there's a gap of three months or two months in there. Do you wanna fill that gap? or are you happy to send it? So it proactively will help support you ensuring that you're meeting the requirements of the HCPC. Okay, so that's enough of me showing you the dashboard. How do you log CPD? Because ultimately this is what it comes down to. And this is the biggest bit of the barrier what most people out here can identify to. So to record CPD, you've got a menu here on the left hand side and on for this demo i'm just going to concentrate on the diary form i'm going to have a quick look at the reflection quick look at the entries and then i'm going to show you how to build a portfolio really quickly to create a cpd diary entry or to log any cpd is really simple all you need to do is click onto the diary form on the left hand side and you can either show tour option which is a little option at the top which will walk you through the functionality and features of this diary form or i'm going to now walk you through what you'll be expected to put within this document. So the title, if you click onto the title option, this is literally a description of what you have done or what has taken place. So a great example of that would be demonstration of the CPD system with Emma and Andrew to show how easy it is to record a CPD. It literally just needs to be a title of what you have done, why you have done it. That literally just needs the title. The next options are the number of hours where you can put the number of hours or the number of minutes that this CPD has taken place over. Now, if this activity is, for example, a university module, then you're going to need to put several hundred hours in there, perhaps. If this activity has gone on for more than 24 hours, there is a little tab underneath where you can click that box and then you can free text the amount of hours or minutes that you've taken part in this activity. So we're just going to put on here that we've taken part for one hour. The next option is the start date and the end date. The date field is where you can document the date that your CPD activity has taken place. This should always default to today's date, but equally you can backdate your CPD using the same simple start date. So if you need to, you can backdate it to the day before, and you can also forward plan for the future. So using this simple start date option, you can backdate any CPD that you've done historically. You can document CPD that you're planning to do today. And you can also record CPD that you plan to do for the future that the system will then send you an intuitive reminder to capture, upload evidence and supporting information to update your portfolio. The end date is if this learning activity has taken place over a 24 hour period of time. You don't need to complete the end date if this is a singular CPD activity. The end date is there to identify things like a two or four day course, or maybe a module that you've done at university that spans over a period of time so that anybody looking at this entry can see that this particular activity was done over a set period rather than just one singular event. The next box is where you will select your governing body. And if you are HCPC registered, you would select that you are HCPC. And if you are not regulated by the HCPC, then you'll select this option and select either none or other. But we're gonna continue on the HCPC for this demonstration. The next option is in what capacity you took part in this learning and development. And from here, you can click that you took part in this activity in your own time or in work time and then you can select one of the appropriate options there that is relevant to how you took part. The next category is a drop down list of all the different activities. And from here, you can select the most appropriate one that's relevant to what you have done on this particular activity. So as you can scroll down the list, you can see one that's relevant and the system will also analyze whether you are doing the same thing all the time and ensure that it reminds you to have a good mixture of different learning activities. The next two options are two of the options that you can toggle on and off again in your profile. So in your profile and settings, you can select whether you want these two options to appear by simply toggling, toggling them by simply toggling them within your CPD profile. 
The next box is the Divine Numbers activity has benefited me because, and this is the box where you will put your reflection to how you have met standard three and standard four of the HCPC, or if you're not regulated, what you have done, why you have done it, and how it's going to influence the way that you do your job, the, man the way you manage your service users or patients. The next options are mapping this to the HCPC standards. And again, we've made this system really simple and intuitive, but it's really important that you understand when you're mapping this against CPD standards. So if you're going to map it against standard three and standard four, then please have a really good understanding of how this specific activity relates to those two particular standards. Standard one, of course, is just you maintaining a continuous record of your CPD, which you can defaultly tick by recording this entry. Standard two is demonstrating that your CPD is a good mixture of learning activities. And again, going back to your dashboard, when you look over the two periods of time, you can look and ensure that all of your CPD is a good mixture of different activities and you're not just doing one thing all the time, like attending a course. Standard three and standard four differ and again, one of them ensures that the CPD is contributed to the quality of your practice and service delivery. And standard four is how this maps and benefits the service user. So please either take some additional learning or go across to the HCPC website to ensure that when you're mapping your CPD, you've got a good understanding around these two different standards. The next option is where you can tag this entry. And again, up in your settings, you can create a complete set of tags that are personal to you. So if you're anything like me and like to be organized, you can create a tag for all of your different categories of CPD. You can create a tag for learning that you've done as part of your mandatory workplace or whatever that might look like, but you can personalize these tags to however you want to best organize. Imagine having a shoe box or multiple shoe boxes where you would historically store all your certificates with a label on each one. This tagging is very similar to that, but in a digital format. The next box at the bottom is where you can attach supporting evidence. Now, what I always say is every entry doesn't always need to have an attachment to support the evidence. It might well be a web address. So you can see there there's a field to have a web address. And a great example of that would be a webinar link or maybe a YouTube video or an online resource where you've accessed this learning from. You can copy and paste that web address into there. You also have an, a really good little option, which is, do you need a reminder of the expiry date of this certificate? And what we identified is lots of portfolios historically will contain lots of information that is no longer relevant to your current or future practice. And this allows you to ensure if you tick that box, the system will remind you to have a look at this entry in a defined period of time. And that's really good to ensure that if you do need to revalidate or you do need to ensure that you take part in that revalidation or that updating of that learning, that you can make provision for this by the system reminding you. And a good example of that would be perhaps a first aid at work course where you have to do a renewal every two or three years. This system will then tell you that you need to consider that renewal at a point in the future. Your next option is where you can click on the browse and you can select and upload supporting evidence. So you could click onto the browse, you could go to your downloads folder or to your desktop, find supporting evidence that is relevant to your current or future practice or to this particular diary entry, and then you can upload that as an attachment. Once you're happy with all of this, you can scroll to the top if you want to and review it. But once you're happy with this entry, you simply just scroll to the very bottom of the system and then you have two options. Save and continue, which is great if you're going to go make yourself a cup of tea and then come back, or save and close, which will then save this entry, close down the diary system, and then take you through to the CPD entries. Once you have submitted your entry, it will then take you through to your entries profile. And within the entries is all of the CPD that you have submitted using either the dashboard or the mobile app. And walking through this, I'm going to talk you through how you can scan, find, and categorize all of your CPD. So on the left hand side, you can see all of the years. So if you click onto that option, you'll be able to see all of your CPD organized into all of the years. Now imagine historically you had boxes of CPD in shoe boxes, in lever arch folders. This is going to digitally store all of your CPD in exceptionally usefully year tabs. So you can see what you've done in 2023. 2024, 2025, or even backdated things like 
2021-2022. So all of your CPD, it's going to categorize into digital folders, into digital years. The next option is any tag. So when you set your tags, this will filter all of the tags. And again, this is really useful if you just want to build a portfolio to contain specific tags or you just want to keep organized all of your learning and development that you've documented on this system. The next option is any type. And this looks at all the different types of CPD. So your diary entries and your reflections, and you can split them and see how many diary options you've done over a period of time and how many reflections you've done over a period of time. The next option is your governing body. And this is really useful if you want to look at what you've done as any governing body or as HCPC, but it defines all of the entries that you've mapped against any of those specific governing bodies. The next one is your categories. So again, if you're looking for a specific category of CPD, you can search this option so you can see there where there's a category of webinar and there's a category of learning by doing. But as you build your CPD portfolio, these categories will start to list all of the different categories that you've selected along that date period of time. And the next option is a really useful option, which we call CPD Health Check, which will scan all of your CPD for complete entries, like you can see the two below that are both sat at 100%, partially complete entries, which will highlight as amber, and then incomplete entries, which will highlight as red. And the idea behind this CPD Health Check is that you always have a CPD portfolio that is fit for practice by having them at least 100% complete and with a green tag. You also have the option at the end to search for your CPD. So if you have a particular piece of CPD evidence that you want to look for, if you type in there whatever term, so if you typed demo, for example, in there, then all of your CPD entries below will filter specifically for that tag or that name that you're looking for. So anything that contains demo, as you can see, will highlight there. But that's really useful when you should start build upon your CPD portfolio because it will filter anything across all of your CPD entries across any of the years. Reflective practice using this CPD dashboard is really simple. All you need to do is select on the reflection on the left hand side and the reflective boxes will appear. So again, just like the diary form, the title of the reflection just needs to be literally what you have done or an account of that reflection in practice. So a great example of that would be discussion with a colleague in relation to capturing CPD. The next box underneath is the date. And again, just like the CPD diary form, you can backdate this, you can document it as today, or you can plan something for the future. And again, the system will intuitively remind you to fill the rest of the fields. So we're gonna leave that as the 4th of December, 2023. The introduction is basically a brief introduction to this reflective entry. And that just needs to be nothing other than maybe two or three lines or a couple of sentences of an introduction to what you are reflecting about. The next option as you scroll down is the reflective models. And on here, we've got several reflective models that you can choose from. And the great advantage is as you select and choose the reflective models, the boxes below will customize completely based upon the model. So if we select a reflective model from that list, you'll see that all the boxes below will then select and change. So for this example, we're going to use Rolf et al. And we can see now that underneath, you've got the what, so what, now what options. And the great thing about this platform is, is when you click onto one of those boxes, underneath that will give you all of the guide information to what you might want to consider to include within that box. So reflective practice can sometimes be very detailed and you might want to spend lots of time completing your entry and inputting the information to what, for example, uh, in this problem or difficulty, the different reasons for being stuck or the reasons for feeling bad and the reasons we didn't get on. However, if you want to complete each of these sections at a different time, you can simply input some text, scroll to the very bottom, and then you can click save and continue or save and close. So you don't need to complete all of these sections at once. You can click on save and continue or save and close, and it will save that reflective practice up to the point. And as you can see on there, it's now highlighted as 56% complete because it's looking for those rest of the mandatory fields that you need to complete. 
And all you need to do to go back in and edit that entry is click on the edit option within your profile and then you can pick up where you left off and complete that reflective form. So all the information you can continue filling in the so what. The now what. You can tag this entry just like you can with the CVD diaries. And then if you want to, you can choose appendix and also references. Now, a really good tip here is if anybody is undertaking any academic work and are already completing reflections, then please bring them across onto this system where you can copy your appendices in there and your references. And then you can use this maybe at some point in the future when you are supporting or mentoring other practitioners or students. Again, you can also support this document by uploading evidence. So if you've done some research or you've done some further learning or some further reading, then you can actually click on to browse, upload that to this re reflective practice and then submit that as part of your reflective evidence. And again, once you make any amendments or changes, you can click on save and continue, which allows you to save your piece of work and continue working or click on save and close, which will close this entry down and then save it securely to your entry section. So when you click save and close, you can see that this will then go back and you can see that your percentage has now changed. And also you can go in and edit and amend this anytime you want in the future. Now within this entry section is also a really good feature where you can preview that entry. So what this does is it automatically formats all of the CPD with your evidence into a brief preview so you can click on the preview and you can have a look at what it will look like if you decide to print that entry off in the future so as you can see loading up on screen it's put your title the date the what the so what the now what and if you have got any supporting evidence if you click on the next page at the very bottom then that will move and show you any supporting evidence that you have within this system once you've submitted all of your diary entries and your reflections to build a CPD portfolio using this system is really simple. When you select on the portfolio option on the left hand side, you will then have two options. The first option gives you the ability to create a PDF digital portfolio of all the CPD that you've done between a defined period of time. And on the right hand side, you have access to the HCPC audit portal. You would only use the HCPC audit portal if you've been chosen for audit and you wanted to format all of your CPD into the format that is then easily allowed to upload to the HCPC audit portal. And again, we'll cover this in more detail in a webinar for the future. If you click onto the option on the left hand side, which is create portfolio, this will then give you the options to select what you want to include within your downloaded PDF and what you want to exclude. So a great example is the front page, the contents page, where a content list of all your CPD will be, your professional information and qualifications, which is taken from your profile tab, the summary of work, job description, and your personal statements, again, which is taken from your profile tab, your profile picture, an infographic CPD overview of all of your CPD analyzed over the defined period of time, and then how you've met your HCPC standards. So once you click on to next, you can then start to build what your portfolio will look like. So you can put a title line in there on the top. And that might just be something, for example, like CPD portfolio or CPD interview, whatever that might be. But as you type, you can see on the right hand side, it actually shows exactly what it's going to appear and look like. And then you can maybe on the next line down, put on there for interview and that again would show on the right hand side that this is an interview portfolio. You can also change the design of the page by clicking the two little arrows at the side of the preview. So as you click on the arrows, you can choose the design of exactly what your printed or downloaded portfolio will look like once it's been designed by yourself. Once you're happy with that, you can click on the next option and then you can choose the date range that you want your digital portfolio. So for this date range, we're just going to keep as is. So this is going to be the 4th of December 2022 to the 4th of December 2023. But you can click on those boxes and you can define exactly the date range that you want to choose. All of your entries will appear from. Once you've chosen the dates, click on to next and then you can see all of your entries between those date periods. So here you can see all of your CPD diary entries between that date period. So 
On the top left hand side, where it's got title and evidence, you can then select all or deselect all, which means you can select all of the entries or you can deselect the entries and then you can individually toggle them on and off as appropriate. So if you wanted to include or exclude, all you need to do is turn that entry on or off, and then that will appear within your portfolio. And again, on the right hand side where it says evidence, if you have any supporting evidence, you can also toggle that on and off, which means that that piece of evidence will appear within that CPD portfolio. Once you're happy with the diary entries that you want to include, if you click onto next, this will then just look at selected reflective entries. So on the left hand side, again, you can toggle those entries on or off or decide which one of those entries you want to appear in this portfolio. Once you're happy with that, you can click onto next. And then this is where the magic happens, which is where all of your CPD over that set period of time will be generated into a PDF where you can download now on screen or you can email that to yourself, which is more convenient for some people. So if you click on the email option, for example, you will get a little notification to the top right hand side that says within the next 10 minutes, your CPD portfolio, that collected PDF of all the information that you've included will be emailed to you within the next 10 minutes and then you can click and download that. And that's an amazing portfolio. You can either share with somebody digitally or if you need to, you can print that off and present that at an interview or an audit or maybe supervision. So that is how you would build a PDF portfolio that you can do as many times as you like. And it's always really useful as a practitioner to download a portfolio regularly just to have a look at what your portfolio looks like and also to identify any gaps of CPD that you might want to consider backdating information to fill. Alongside the CPD portal that you can access from the RCOT website, you can also download the app from the App Store, including iOS and Android. So simply search for CPD Me on the App Store, and then once you've downloaded the app, to log in, all you simply need to do is click on the forgotten password option. Once you click on the forgotten password option, just input your registered email that you use to access the RCOT website, and then you will be sent a one-time temporary password. That one-time temporary password is password that you will only need for accessing the CPD app. You don't need to change your password on the RCOT website. So once you receive that temporary password, you can then go back to your login information. You can enter your email address in there, which is the email that you use for accessing the RCOT website, your temporary password, and then click on to login and all of your CPD that you've mapped on your CPD dashboard will automatically pull across into the app. Um, a couple of different questions around whether or not the log can be downloaded and printed. Once it's yours, it's on there. Um, Emma, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but once you've kind of got that record on there, I know there was a couple of questions around, can I share this with my manager? You basically have your record. Um, you'll have all of your information on there to, to download. Uh, in short, okay, yes, no you can you can you can download it. You can download it in two formats. So you can download it in a PDF format, which you can choose to then print off if you want if you're going for interview um, or for um, supervision, yeah. such for example. And you can also um, pull it off in the format that is exactly the format that is required for an HCPC audit. So if you do get picked for audit, it pulls it off in exactly the right formats so that you can very quickly upload it to the HCPC website. And if you do get stuck or you need any help or support to do that, then everywhere on the dashboard, so let me just show you the dashboard again. Everywhere on the dashboard at the bottom right hand side, you can see that little support icon. If you do get picked for audit, and you have a little panic and you're not sure whether you've got everything in the right format, if you click on the little support icon and you type in there, I have been selected for audit, the team will actually come online and they'll give you some golden nuggets and they'll also send you some guide videos on what you need to do in relation to pull in all your CPD for audits. So as you can see there on the screen on the bottom right, if you click that little blue icon there now, it will literally walk you through the audit process. So if you do get chosen for HCPC audit, then actually um, it's not a very stressful experience as long as you've got your CPD on the system. That's the most important bit. You have to have had your CPD in there for real, to be able to pull it off in the, in the correct format, if that makes sense. Okay, Brill. And there's a couple of people asking about um, previous 
previous activities that they've done so can they log that in cpd me can they log it in the portfolio i'm guessing the answer is yes can we go yes backwards and, and absolutely things? So on the diary form, you can document things that you've done for today. You can equally document things you've done historically. So anything you've Mm -hmm. done in the past and equally you can plan for the future. So if you want to document something to have a reminder, you can forward date that for the future. And then the system will intuitively say to you, hi, Andrew, you said you were attending a conference on the 14th of February. Do you want to capture some evidence? Do you want to capture a certificate? And do you want to upload that to your profile? So you can use it to document things you've done today, historical things in the past, and you can equally document things that you plan to do for the future. Brilliant. And I think uh, there was a couple of questions from, sorry, I'm just trying to read the chat and also uh, catch up here, but there was a couple of questions, um, people saying, if I do get selected for audit, is this enough? Is this enough for me? If this is is this record going to be enough? Um, and I just thought it would be good for you to, to kind of chat through that a little bit, Andrew, if possible. So that's a really good question because the system will help you collate all of your CPD into the right format that you need to upload to the HCPC website. Yeah. But it's the system has got an, a level of intelligence behind it, so it will help try and support you to ensure yeah. that your portfolio will meet the requirements of the HCPC, but it's down to you as an individual practitioner what you put into there. So things like ensuring there's a good evidence of reflection with some supporting evidence, making sure that you meet the required standards. So is it very clear and obvious that you've met standard three and standard four? What I would say to you is the RCLT have got some really, really good website, uh, good um, videos on how you will be um, supported for audit. And equally, yeah. the HCPC website have got some amazing videos on there that actually show you how to meet standard three and how to meet standard four, because they're the two standards that sometimes people get confused with and, and not too sure exactly what they should be documenting in each of those boxes. But as long as you put all that information onto the system with your reflection on how you've changed your practice or how you've changed the way that you do your job and benefit or link that to the service, user then then the system will intuitively pull all that information off and then allow you to send it through to the hcpc but it is down to what you put into the system it's your personal reflection it's not something you can copy from somebody else it has to be your reflection don't worry too much about spelling mistakes don't worry too much about grammatical errors as long as they can interpret it because you have to remember the people who audit our portfolios are just practitioners like us. They are. They don't yeah. have any superpowers. They are just an occupational therapist or a paramedic who is looking at your portfolio and seeing if it's mapped against the required standards. Yeah. So we can't do the work for you, but we can organise the work for you and organise it Absolutely. and map it against the standards. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Okay, fab. Um, so I'm just going to see if we've got. I'm just going to go through. There's a lot of you talking in the chat, and it's so great that we've got so many of you on today. But let me just grab a couple more questions for the time being and then Emma if you're okay to rejoin me um and we can talk through um the rest of the slides um there's a couple of different people saying if they're already uh, CPD me members what do they do um with their email address do they just link straight over how does that work I know we've done a bit of work around that haven't we so it might be worth us just touching on that yes yep. so sorry Andrew I don't know if you want to take that one Yes, I can do. So all you would need to do is just contact the support team with your email address that you've previously registered for CPDME and they will map everything across automatically to RCLT. So don't let it stress you out or worry. We've not lost any piece of information. Just contact the support team either via the little support option to the bottom right um, and one of the team will do it. There's literally a team available. So if you've got the app, you can WhatsApp the team and right up until 10 p.m. at night, somebody will resolve that issue for you. Brilliant. And I'm just going back through the chat there, like I say, so someone's saying, what is the difference between a diary entry and a reflection entry? A diary entry, in simple terms, is just something that you document. So, for example, attending a course or taking part in supervision or whatever that might be, it literally is a, um, a, a documented It's like almost having a paper diary of what you've done today, what you learned, and how that's going to influence a change of practice. And on the diary entry, um, equally what you can do is you can document and support that with some supporting evidence. So you can upload a piece of evidence like a certificate or presentation or PowerPoint. And what the system will do is it will equally tell you all the different types of evidence that you can upload to it. So a diary entry is literally... Imagine you writing it digitally into a diary, putting some certificates in there and then saving it. And equally, you can also tag it and you can map that against the standards that you think it's met in relation to the HCPC. Whereas a reflection, if I can just um, 
refresh my screen it's just hiding behind this light a reflection is something where actually you're going to go more into depth of an incident so for example something that's gone really good at work or really well compared to yeah. something that maybe hasn't gone so well that you want to do a deep dive into and then map that against a model like Gibbs's or John's or Rolf et al or an academic reflective model that gives more mm -hmm. of a deep dive into the actual incident itself so that you can have a better analytical review of what you'll do differently next time now a top tip for you is the HCPC really love to see reflective practice so they like to see that you've changed the way you do your job based upon an incident or something that's gone really well at work or maybe something where you can learn from so that's a, a, probably a really good tip for you brilliant Um, yeah, so there's just a couple of, there's, like I say, a couple of people who are saying they love using CPD me, me. they love using CPD me, um, we're going to get that, is their record still going to be there? So if they've now moved to RCOT and they've got all of their existing stuff, as long as it's the same account, we should be able to just link them straight back up, is that right? Yep, absolutely. So it's mapped to Brilliant. your email address. So as long as that account's mapped across, that is absolutely fine. It, it should just work Brilliant. fluidly. Uh, Claudia, can I pop a yep. question to Andrew? It's one that's coming up a few times, Andrew, and it's just around logging into the app and what login details people should use to do that. I wonder if you could just cover that for us, please, Andrew. Yep, absolutely. So it is linked to your RCOT email address. So all you need to do on the app is go in there and click forgotten password. And then that app will generate you a temporary password that you only need to use on the CPDME app. So this is not the password that you'll use to access the RCLT website. It is just to use the CPDME app. So put your email address in, you'll get a temporary password. You can then use that to log into the app and then you'll be able to map everything on the app to what is actually on your dashboard. And again, the key token is use the same email address that you've reg registered for um, accessing the RCLT website. Brilliant. I did just see another quick question in relation to evidence. Can you add more than one piece of evidence? Yes, you can. You can add multiple pieces of evidence and in whatever digital format you can attach from your computer. So PDFs, PowerPoints, movie files, links to YouTube, links to electronic website resources and such. So whatever that electronic evidence looks like, you can attach it. Brilliant. So we are going to have some more time um, for some questions at the end as well. So. Uh, Pav, if you're okay to just grab the slides and pop them back on the screen. Myself and Emma are just going to go through a little bit more information with you all. Um, so, yeah, so thanks so much for the, the demo slides there and the, the kind of presentation um, of the, the system itself, Andrew. Um, as you can tell, we're super passionate about incorporating CPDME into our membership package. Um, but don't just take it from us. Um, you'll be able to see on the screen there that there are a couple of quotes from members who have highlighted just how beneficial um, access to the portfolio has been for them. I think it's really important for you to, to hear that from other people um, because it's not just us saying this is great. It's actually members like yourselves um, who have that as well. So you can see Megan, um, who was one of our pilot participants, talking about how she's made the most of being able to access it on the go. Um, and one of our members on Twitter, as soon as we launched, said um, about the impact that it's had um, on them within their non-traditional job role and feeling really confident now that evidence, evidence their CPD to HCPC should they need to. Um, so it's just really nice that we've been able to get those kind of examples from members like yourselves who have been either part of the pilot um, or have just kind of really got the ball rolling as soon as they got access to it. So Emma is just going to talk to you now about a team who've really benefited from uh, using this power before right through. Yep, yeah, got the slide. Brilliant. Perfect, thank you. Um, so the Southwest Cluster Therapy team based in Scotland very kindly got in touch with us to tell us how using this portfolio really made a significant difference to their team approach to CPD. And again, if any of you are on the call from that team, do say hello. Um, we're really grateful for you sharing this example. Um, now, the bullet points on the screen are just some of the ways in which the team felt it made a difference. So they feel they've now got a more unified approach. They make time for um, CPD entries. They feel that it's encouraged reflecting together on things that have gone well or could have gone better. Um, and it's really it's really kind of refocused the team in relation to CPD throughout the year, not just for audit. And that's a really key message um, because we know it can be really difficult to stay on top of things. Um, and they also said it's been an absolute success in our team. We would highly recommend using it and it's brought us closer together. 
Um, so I just wanted to highlight the value that comes with um, approaching CPD in teams, both here where it's an example of how using a shared tool and a structure has really brought CPD to the forefront again in practice, um, but also the work that we do as teams and services can be um, easier to evidence sometimes as part of our own CPD and the impact to either the people that we're working with or the quality of our service delivery through the work that we're doing as a team. So it was just really to highlight um, that this could be something you want to take away from coming to the webinar. You know, is this potentially something you could take back to your team as something to help you all embed positive CPD habits um, all year round? Next slide, please. And I'll, I'll hand back to you now, Claudia. Yeah, uh, thanks for that, Emma. Um, so now we've got some food for thought around how the CPD portfolio can have the greatest impact for yourselves. So with every new year comes a chance to reflect on the year gone by um, and to set our goals and intentions, obviously, for the year ahead. With it being January now, it's a great time to begin mapping your CPD for the rest of the year. Is it that you're simply looking to make sure that you're tracking the activities that you are doing? Are you looking to develop some new skills? Um, your CPD portfolio can help you to stay on track with all of these things that you have planned. So like I said, you'll get reminders if you've started an entry, all of that kind of things. But we um, here at RCOT have also created our own 2024 goal setting form, um, which is just kind of thinking about your career as a whole or your professional opportunities that you have. And thinking about that goal setting form for members where you can share up to three goals with us, with RCOT for the year. Um, and we'll keep you accountable over the course of the next 12 months and signpost any resources that we think might help you to succeed. So if you tell us that you, one of your goals is that you want to get more involved with research, um, if there's some stuff that comes up about research or some opportunities, we'll share them with you. So the form, the link to that form will be going in the chat, hopefully now. Um, basically just to kind of take some time to reflect on it we have it was mentioned in highlight that went out um at the start of the year we will also be emailing you all about it but just kind of taking that step back approach and looking at how we're going to plan for the rest of the year um and kind of looking at your cpd goals and emma i know you've kind of got some thoughts on on creating good cpd habits as well haven't you um yes yeah jump back in. i think yeah, yeah, I can jump back in. That's absolutely fine. Um, it was just really to say that um, it's always a good excuse, isn't it, to just take some time to reflect on our own CBD habits and also think about how we're going to put into practice those new and improved, improved habits like what um, Claudia was just saying. And in terms of a few takeaways, when we're thinking about this portfolio and using it in a way that suits us, um, CPD and meeting the CPD standards becomes a lot less daunting and easier to embed into professional life when we recognise all of the CPD we already do. Um, so there's lots of resources on the HGPC website about all of the activities that count. your CPD activities. Obviously, it's helping you to think about every time you enter a CPD diary entry, it's helping you to think about what is it that, you know, which CPD standard is this helping me to meet? Um, so that's another really good way uh, to make best use of the portfolio. And when you do become more familiar and confident with the CPD standards and expectations around audit, it helps to demystify all of this and, and sort of lessen any fear or anxiety that might we might associate with it. Um, using the uh, portfolio generally, again, yes, it is your own individual record, um, but we've just talked about a team approach. So even though you each individually have a record, it can still bring CPD to the forefront of conversation. You can embed it in the way that you practice. So if you've got learning opportunities, reflection opportunities that you're embedding into work um, days as well. It just means that you're being more consistent in the way that you approach CPD, recognising all the times that you're doing it on a daily basis, but then also being able to record it. And finally, um, just wanted to share how often my colleagues and I reflect on the fact that we're each other's greatest resource and can be each other's biggest inspiration. So each and every single one of us have different strengths and abilities and um, we will all meet and or work with people and um, it might be people that we've worked with in the past it might be people we're working with now but who become really greatly influential in our professional development 
So it's just a highlight that we should hold on to that. We should continue to network as part of our CPD actions um, and activities and, you know, think about how we're going to follow up on all of those people we come across in our professional lives, because you never know which direction it might take you in, which is really exciting. Um, Claudia, I hope that helps. I'll hand back to you now. Yes. Yeah, and I think you just froze uh, for a quick sec. Pav, if you're right, to just go back oh. to one slide. You froze. You, think which bit? We were talking about getting familiar with the HCPC and what's expected. I think you cut out a little bit there. So if you could just go over that point again. Um, if anyone oh, wants yes. to pop okay. in the chat that that was, yeah, I think that you just froze for a little second there. So if we could just. Oh, apologies. Um, apologies yeah. about that. Right. So I was just talking about once we recognise all of the CPD we do, um, it becomes a lot less daunting. But in terms of getting familiar with what's expected by HCPC, I just really wanted to highlight how the portfolio itself is designed in such a way that does it does that for us. Um, what I found through using it myself is just that, you know, every time I enter a CPD and a diary entry, I'm prompted to think about what category of CPD is this, which instantly helps me to think about the different types that I'm doing and am I meeting that standard? And it also just highlights the breadth of um, activities that we can do. There's lots of information on the HCPC web pages around all of the things that count. Um, but when we do become more familiar and confident with both the HCPC CPD standards and what's expected if we um, if we we're audited, then that's what helps to demystify everything really and lessen any fear or anxiety that we might have associated with that. Um, because it we, you know, this tool helps to make um see recording CPD simple and meeting those standards simple. So hopefully that's captured the bit that we missed. <laughs> I hope. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um yeah. Yeah, I think it has. Um so yeah, brilliant. Pav, if you're right to just move us on to the next slide, that would be brilliant. Lovely. Um, so thanks for that, Emma. So just thinking about, as I kind of said uh, previously, just having that bird's eye view of the year that we've got in January and the January mindset. And we've got this new uh, member benefit and everyone kind of feels ready and raring to go. But with that in mind, I just want to talk a little bit about the other uh, member benefits that you can take advantage of as RCT members. Um, whether you are wanting to get more involved with events, um, join one of our networks, you might have a professional query that you're not really sure how to tackle. Um, you can talk through it with our in-house professional advisory service. Um, or as I kind of said before, if you want to get more involved with research, um, I just really want you to feel the full benefit of being an RCOT member and would love to help you make the most of your RCOT membership in a way that works for you. So when we do, as we said, we're going to It's also always open and um, you'll have our contact details as well for the membership team um, and for um, the membership team, also for the professional development team. Um, but it's just interesting to think about how else do you want to use your RCOT membership? Well, you've now got this brand new member benefit. Actually, there's some things that you haven't really taken full advantage of and we want you to, to make the most of it as much as you can. Um, so, yeah, I just kind of wanted to flag that really, um, that, we want you to be we want you to be making the most of it um so now is when we're going to have some questions um we did kind of do a little question preview in the middle and then we're going to go back through um the chat it's now saying that, okay bear with me one second claudia just just for note <clears throat> yeah my it my it team just been on the phone there's a global um network of um, internet issues that's why our zoom keeps going glitchy because it uses the same platform as ours does for storage so i think loads okay. of websites across the entire world have just gone down and um, storage platforms are all rebooting back up that's the reason why my i was panicking my dashboard wasn't right. working but it's because it's just rebooting yes. but then so is zoom that's why it keeps freezing yourself and emma brilliant perfect timing just for <laughs> our, our launch event that's what we like to see uh, a global well welcome global to the world, world of, of it exactly yes. exactly um so okay let me have a look uh can everyone hear me okay i know that there is uh been a couple of different things uh, what we couldn't have picked a better night but thank you so much for sticking with us everyone we're really um oh is someone said claudia that what i will yeah. do is i i'll make sure i do a very detailed recording of the system and the platform and i'll get that across to you and emma so you can share it with your valued fabulous members because i'm very sure Brilliant. they want to have a look at the ins and outs though so. yes and there is like you know we've got we've got um videos and bits that you guys have already worked on as well so yeah let's try and get some a more in-depth kind of walkthrough but this should hopefully 
what we wanted this session to do was give you a flavour of what CPD Me is all about, why we've decided to uh, bring this into the RCT membership package, and also a chance for you to answer questions. And I know that you have kind of been really active in the chat. And as I said at the start, this session is for you, and we hope that you've kind of taken some away from it as well. I'm just going to go through. Sorry if anyone who didn't uh, catch the last bit of what I was saying on the member benefits slide. Um, it was just about really making the most of your, your member benefits. Um, oh, the lights have just gone out in here, so that's great. Just pass me one second. Can't make these things up today. Um, but yeah, just making sure that you make the most of your member benefits. So when we send the slides around, we'll have different links um, on that slide. And that should take you through um, to the different member benefits that we have. But obviously, everything is on the website as well. And if you do want to contact us, if you feel like you've been an RCOT member for a while or you're a new, you're a new member and you're not sure where anything sits, um, we have a um, membership directory who are all very happy to help. It's the people who are on the call helping you um, and answering questions tonight. So we'd definitely love to hear from you. So if you do feel like you can be getting more out of your RCOT membership, please do contact us because uh, we want to help you do that in any which way you feel best so let me just have a look through some more questions um well we've had some good feedback which is really positive appreciate the time it hasn't been great with some of the other bits um but yeah people really welcome in the uh the video uh andrew so we'll definitely get that forward as a priority for our members which is fab Let's just have a look. Well, sorry, there's as I said, you know, as you can probably tell from the chat, there are a lot of you on tonight. Um, so Yeah, so is it possible to finish showing us how to use the platform at some point? Definitely, as we've said, we'll be getting that video sorted for you as well. Um, a couple of people saying that they're off sound, but that's okay. As we register, I feel like you If you've handwritten a quick reflection, can you upload a photo to writing of evidence or do you have to type it up? Andrew, you're just on mute there. That is a really good question, Claudia. I can answer that for you. So, yes, on the app, once it's once the server's all reset and turn itself back on, you can actually capture those handwritten notes as supporting evidence. So it, you would just put a title in there, the date, and then in the description, you would say, see attached handwritten notes, because actually, if you've written it all out, the last thing you want to do is type it all up again. But that said, on the mobile app, you can dictate into it. And I have just put a YouTube link into the chat. So please do have a quick look at that YouTube link, because that gives you a little demo, tells you the history of CPD and some of the barriers and such. But you can dictate it into the app. Equally, another top tip for you is when we all attend conferences, we all take pictures, don't we? The slide sets of people's slide sets, but we never do anything with them. Those make perfect evidence to attach to a CPD Me diary entry. So if you do capture those slide shots or, or slides of people presenting, then actually equally you can attach them as evidence as well. So if you've got your handwritten notes and some pictures of the slide sets, then actually you've almost got that complete session of CPD boxed off there with evidence, reflection, and some handwritten notes. Brilliant. And Emma, just a question for you just around those CPD habits. Now, someone has said, that, and as we know, with um, there isn't this kind of set number of hours that you need to do for uh, CPD. But for someone who's just starting out recording CPD, could you give us kind of a measure of how often you should either be logging into the platform or how often you should try and aim to get something down once a month? If you were trying to start to build good CPD habits, do you think something like setting a monthly reminder in your phone to remind you to log on, things like that? What would I mean? You're you know you've got a lot of experience. With yeah, CPD, I think it would be good. Yeah, I think it's important sure. to highlight that. Um, hopefully everyone can hear me, and I'm not frozen now. But yeah. HCPC measure us by the amount of CPD we do, but they're really interested in that reflective piece. So, what difference is the CPD that we're doing making to the people that we work with and to our quality of our service delivery? And um, 
I think something that's really important is that, you know, we are expected to maintain um, an up to date list of activities and HEPC will not want to see gaps of three consecutive months or more. So if you're trying to embed good CPD habits, we're all different. But one option could be to aim for monthly entries because then you're um, preventing having that any gaps. And like Andrew showed you when the demo at the beginning of the demo, there was a visual there and you could sort of see on a graph um, where yeah. you had CPD entries and how many you had, and that was great. But I think it's also important to highlight, I think somebody mentioned this in the chat, the chat's moving quite quickly, so it's hard to keep up, but I think somebody was mentioning how useful it is to have both reflection and entries. And that's because there's lots of things that we do that we can record very quickly in our CPD entry log that we might not need to do a complete reflection on or have heaps of evidence for. And yeah. um, because when it comes to being audited and things like that, there'll be certain bits that stand out as really in-depth quality pieces of CPD that help us yeah. to demonstrate the difference our CPD is making. Um, so it, it, there isn't an, an answer of a one size fits all. Andrew might want to add something else in, but it's just, yeah, set yourself habits. Um, some people like to do it where they have a monthly reminder in their phone or their calendar and that prompts them to log in, look back over the month that's gone by and enter in their entries. Other people um, have it sort of saved as a favourite and they'll bring it up you know, you're on, a, you're on a call now, so some people might have this open in another tab and they might be jotting down some of their key thoughts and reflections. Um, yeah. we're, all, we're all totally different, but try and think about a way that will work for you. And also, as we build those member stories that Claudia mentioned earlier, you'll hear directly from your peers and colleagues and their techniques and, and the ways in which they use it might actually inspire you or give you ideas to try as well. Yeah, and I think, does it look yeah. like we're up and running, Andrew? Oh, so this is welcome to my world. Um, <laughs> yes, so um, I've just got a note from ITC and it looks like everything's back up now. So if anybody works in the NHS, when you're in IT, they say turn it off, turn it back on again. That's basically what the world has just done in the world of IT. <laughs> um, but you can see there, my this is my real portfolio now, my real HCPC portfolio. And you can see there at the bottom, there's no gaps in my 12 months of, or the last 12 months of CPD. And just like Emma just said, a really good thing is just look, just look at that. And if there's any gaps in there, then you will have done something. You might have some emails or bulletins from work, but but it's about proactively changing your mindset. So every time you do something yeah. that's going to influence a change of practice, document it. I guarantee you, if you watch that YouTube video, the mobile app will take you less than two minutes, less time than it will take you to brush your teeth, pro quote, the OT student from Salford University. But it really will reduce that time. And once you get into that habit of taking part in CPD or learning or discussions or supervisions and then logging it on the app or logging it on the dashboard, it will revolutionize the way you need to think about recording CPD. And more importantly, you will never, ever need to worry or become stressed or anxious if you get called for audit because that will be your time to shine to extract this portfolio to click on that portfolio tab and then to click on that request hcpc audit and everything will be perfectly formatted to reduce any anxiety or worry about you meeting the required standards as long as you've put the cpd into the system Brilliant. I know we've got someone who said that they do it when they when they got the hairdressers once a month, and I think that's fabulous. <laughs> um, so yeah, now we've got the system. Uh, like we say, the the world's decided to press on and off, um, and it's just been bad timing with this session today. But um, we're excited. People are feeling excited about recording uh, CPD now, which is uh, very good news and music to Emma's ears, I'm sure, um, as our professional development lead. So. We are going to call the session to a close today. Again, just apologise for the for the hiccups. As we can see, there's kind of globally nothing that we could have done about that. Um, but we will be making sure that we've got as much resource as possible on the website to help you with this. We've also got, we're going to be sending around the slides. We'll be sending around a recording of this session. And we'll also be sending around all of the contact details for people that you need to contact. So whether you need to contact Andrew's um, team, if you want some more advice from ourselves, we've got the professional development uh, team and we've got the membership team if you want to make the most of your membership. So we will send that round to you all. Thank you so much for joining us today. As I said, you know, we've been really overwhelmed with, by support from yourselves um, and everyone seems to be really on board with this. So it's brilliant um, to have you all with us tonight. Um, apologies again about the technical issue. Um, and I think that is it. Emma and Andrew, I'll let you say goodbye as well. Yes, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you.
Sorry, Andrew, you Emma, go. <laughs> it's all right. If, if, I'll tell you what we can do by magic tomorrow is if you get me a copy of this recording, we will put a demo in between it that will be seamless and nobody <laughs> who's here tonight will even know. <laughs> that sounds anybody. like a plan. That sounds like a plan. And those of you on yeah. the call will be the only ones that know what really happened. Um, but yes, exactly. so we'll, we'll definitely, it's great to see you all. And as Claudia has said, um, thank you so much for the support and the excitement. That's in, I, I, I know it's a virtual room, but I can really feel it, which is amazing. Um, and we'll be following up with a recording and all of the things that you need so that you can access this and share it with all your colleagues and peers as well. Yeah, and also just as you know, we haven't... Um... We know that we haven't been able to answer every single question, but we are going to send you our contact details and we will be following up. So don't worry too much if we haven't answered your question on this call tonight. Um, like I said, we've only had an hour, but we will. Our inboxes are open. Um, and if you do have specific questions, we can uh, get back to you as well. So as I say with that, thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful evening um, and we'll see you all very soon. Goodbye. Take care. Bye bye. Everyone.